Paramount Pictures is currently filming a major motion picture in North Georgia called Very Interesting Things, which you'll see once you check out that movie. We generally work on a few different types of projects. Obviously, we do a lot of short films. Michael, how did you get started in filmmaking? Um, a very large part of the success of any project. Um, I started my filmmaking career actually on a cruise ship, making short films. Wow. I'm the executive producer to our new feature film, um, The Common Denominator. Tell us a little bit about your character in the film. She's really upset um, from the beginning, from the get-go. Tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Well, basically, I, um, I somehow started acting in uh, 1990. Hello, my name is Chris Mashburn. I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Rural Hollywood, a show that takes an in-depth look at the movie industry in the Southeast and beyond. On today's show, I'll be speaking with veteran actor Mike Panuski of the Georgia branch of the Screen Actors Guild. But first, Tennille Wilson will be speaking with filmmaker Bobby Peoples of the Peoples Film Company, who directed the feature film For Thy Love. Hi, I'm Tennille, and we're here with Bobby Peoples of the Peoples Film Company. Hi, Bobby. Hello, how are you? I'm wonderful. Can you share with our audience how you got into filmmaking? Ha ah, wow, long story. <laughs> well, I got into filmmaking like everybody else, you know, starting out as a production assistant, you know, okay. I did some stuff with New Millennium Studios in Petersburg, Virginia, um, you know, owned by Tim Reed and Tim and Daphne Reed. I worked there for about a year, you know, made some connections, bust my butt off, I mean, worked my butt off, I'm sorry, and, you know, just kind of word of mouth, you know, that's pretty much how I got started. So you're from Virginia. So how is the film community in Virginia? But, um, Virginia is okay. I'm, you know, Richmond, Virginia film community is very, it's, it's alive and well. Um, it's doing its thing. You know, I'm glad it got my start there and, you know, it kind of landed me here. <laughs> so. Okay. And you have a feature film called For Thy Love. Yes, correct. Uh, what is it about? Um, if I had to sum it up into a TV guide word, it would be the black, the black version of Lifetime. Okay. Basically. And you know, it's, it's, the whole title is For Thy Love, the Black Love Series Volume 1. So, you know, I want to make sure people understand that, that it is a collection of movies dealing with African American uh, love situations in the community. You know, so I, some people put the word love and they deal with it, you know, differently. So I wanted to make sure that, you know, people who are, my audience can understand what's going on for I want to say love. You know what I'm saying? I just try to twist it around a little bit. Interesting. It's different. Well, I try to make it different, but okay. we'll see. So, uh, how long did it take you to make the film from editing to? Oh, uh, from editing. Okay, I can break it down into, in phases. It took me actually 12 days to shoot it, and about okay. two weeks to edit. And it took about a whole year and a half to get a distribution deal. <laughs> 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 about a year and a half to get the distribution deal straight. So. Okay. Well, that didn't take too long. It sounds like you're very skilled. Uh, well. I like to think so. I mean, you know, my mom said I'm skilled. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we're going to take a, a look at uh, one of the scenes from your film. Okay. All right. How you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Do you work here? How bad do you want it? Please! Go on, Michael. It's no big deal. No, it is a big deal. It's yeah. no big deal. No, it is a big deal. Get out of here with that. Well, I know it was you. Hey, your murder mind handle this for me. Handle that. Did you do it? Nah, I can't tell you that. If Bobby ever puts his hands on me, I'll break him. I made sure I'd be positive. What are you doing, Shelly? I knew I should have cracked her ass. She's in the hospital. Yeah, somebody broke into the house and beat her up. I think I'm falling in love with him. Okay, Bobby. And so you mentioned your distribution deal. Mm -hmm. um, can you go a little bit more in detail about that? Uh, well, distribution deal um, with Image Entertainment. Okay. The same company that put out the Beef series, you know, like the, you know, Beef 1, 2, and 3. And they got a few other movies, you know, Thug Angel with the Tupac documentary. So they do a lot of documentary stuff and, you know, they, they're branching over into doing some, um, you know, urban dramas. Mm -hmm. So, and I was fortunate enough to have minds at the right time when they called. So, wow, but I mean, don't get me wrong now, the Image was a company that after being rejected by so many other companies, when it came to, it was like a, you know, a blessing in disguise, in disguise. All 
right. So. so who are some of the other people that you've worked with on the film? Uh, and but for that love. For that love. Um, well, mostly my actors are up and coming actors. I mean, beyond with I like working with new actors versus seasoned actors. I mean, because they're much more hungrier and they're easier to work with. Uh, but there is two named people in the movie. Well, named for as they've done extra work. Um, Trey Cheney from The Wire, which you know the new season is starting. Um, he plays Pook, Pook, Pookie or Pook. Whatever. <laughs> I'm sorry, Trey, but he plays one of the characters. He's been on all three seasons, so going to the fourth season, he's doing well on that. And also Anthony Fed, who did a um, he did a part of a, a season of season two, I believe. Okay. Um, you know, he did that with the wire. So you know, those are the only people who actually done extra work. But most of my actors, you know, they woke up one morning and said they want to act, and I say, hey, come on, let's do it. All right. So you also have a project, the Black. Love series, is it? Yeah, the Black Love series. I mean, it's like I said before, it's a series of, you know, black love themed movies, you know, that we need to do. Now, don't get me wrong, they got a little action in them too, but, you know, I want to put it out there because some, some issues that we don't talk about. Right. You know what I'm saying? Not just saying love, but issues, you know, under that that we don't talk about and scared to talk about or won't talk about. And I'm like, you know what? I like to talk. Okay. So I'm doing it. All right. So, what are some of your other plans, or what's in the future for Bobby? Oh, well, I mean, a lot, you know, like I said, you know, I do the Street Talk, okay. which is like a marketing company, you know what I'm saying? So other filmmakers and artists, you know, we come to, we have like a, a marketing company. Okay. You know, we do street promotions and getting the word out. That's actually how um, you guys heard about me doing my word on the streets here in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we actually made a service for other filmmakers and other artists to come, you know, get on with, you know, we do that. Street Talk. Okay. And I brought the newspaper here. Ah, so, okay. Street talk. Yeah, street talk. Cool. Yeah. So, how long has this been in process? That, that is actually that is the fifth issue. It's been, it started in January, okay. around the same time I got to Atlanta. It seems like it has a lot of hip hop in it. Yeah, it's, it's underground. It's urban, strictly streets. But um, you know, it's, it's still for the target audience that you know most of my film goers are. You know, it's right there. All right. So if you, um, if anyone wants to get in contact with you, is there a website that anyone needs? Yeah, uh, there's a, a several websites. Uh, my own personal website is the People's Film Company. And that's the People's Film Company. T H E P E O P L E S F I L M Company. C O M P A N Y. I know I talk fast, but you know, I'm okay. trying to say it real quick. I don't know how much time I got. And you got the myspace um, dot com slash street talk four one one. Myspace dot com slash the People's Film Company. I mean, just. If you're on MySpace, you're gonna find me, or I'll find you. So, <laughs> and you can pick up the newspaper at pretty much all your hip hop clubs, all your gas stations, barbershop, hair salons, wow. all over the city. Wow. So we 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 doing it big with that. So. You're doing a lot of marketing. No, so we, we do that. We do ten thousand papers every month. Wow. Ten thousand. Okay. I'm gonna take a look at this. I think everybody should. It looks cool. Yeah. Um. So we really appreciate you speaking with us, Bobby. And, oh, 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 well, don't cut me off. Okay. I, I okay. Wanted, not wanted, yet. To, wanted to give you the copy of the movie <laughs> for that love. What, what camera are we on here? <laughs> okay. This is for you. Okay. You know, check check it out. Tell me what you think about it. Oh, look at If it's it. bad, don't tell me nothing about it. I want to hear it. No. But if it's good, call me up. The cover is inviting. Look yeah. at that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's. I mean, it's a good story. It's a very, very good story. Okay. And both my lead actors are newcomers. So actors, if you're trying to get into the business, do not hesitate to call me because I would rather work with newcomers versus seasoned actors. And there's nothing that, and I have nothing against seasoned actors, that you guys are more hungrier and you guys are willing to do whatever it takes. Also, another thing I want to say for actors, I know I'm long-winded, but actors who don't listen to like casting calls, like mm -hmm. I do a lot of casting stuff here in Atlanta. So far, I've done a short film, and I put specifically how I want people to, to contact me. Do not email me a headshot. Because when I do a casting call, I'd rather, for you to, I'd rather for to talk to you and meet you, see who you are as a person. Because everyone can't take a good picture. So it might, you might look good in the picture, but you might not be the best actor. And someone who might take a bad picture might be the best actor for the job I'm doing. So I'd rather just talk to you face to face and see how you flow in the conversation that we have. So that's how I base, I base my casting needs on that. So you're looking for professionalism. Yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. So if you can't follow directions that way, you know, I mean, right. people, you know, stop sending me emails of your headshots. Not that I'm trying to be big headed, you know, call me up or talk to me face to face, basically. Well, that was very to the point. And again, we appreciate you. I'm going to watch my movie. Thank you. All right. That's it. It's a good movie. We're here with veteran actor and president of the Atlanta branch of the Screen Actors Guild, Mike Panuski. Mike, how are you doing today? Good. How are you? Not too bad. We share with our audience a little bit about your experience as an actor. Um, I uh, have been doing this for uh, more than 20 years. Got started um, 
uh, in college. Um, actually had gone to college to major in sports medicine. Mm -hmm. And um, through a series of events, uh, which could probably take all your whole show to explain, yeah. um, I ended up uh, uh, ending that and deciding to pursue a career in acting. And uh, uh, studied, got my degree at UCLA. and. Um, Worked out in Hollywood for about 10 years, had a pretty good run out there doing a lot of uh, TV shows, commercials, uh, movies, and um, back in 94, uh, I'd gotten married, had kids, and decided that I didn't want to raise kids in L.A. and yeah. that I could commute and work and still uh, raise my family in a quality of life that was uh, something we were more comfortable with. Yeah. So moved out here, and, and since then I've been working out of Atlanta, and I traveled to uh, New York and Los Angeles and all throughout the Southeast and work on a variety of different projects in the same area, film, television, commercials, voiceovers, just whatever's out there. And um, in the last um, few years, uh, I've done things like um, I was in Ray with uh, Jamie Foxx, won the Academy Award. And, nice. Uh, I was just in the, the uh, new Miami Vice movie with Jamie as well, which was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, films like Remember the Titans and Runaway Jury and um, Out of Time and uh, I was on the show uh, Thief that was just on FX, it was shot in New Orleans and um, done uh, lots of different commercials and local voiceovers and uh, have uh, been very fortunate, very blessed to be doing what I would do for free. Sounds like for it. For money. <laughs> um, because uh, most actors can't make a living at this and mm -hmm. so I I consider myself very fortunate and uh, I've worked pretty hard, not just to work as an actor, but um, I think even more significantly for me and my family to have a quality of life that mm -hmm. we're all comfortable with and we feel good about raising our kids in and still being a success in the business, yeah. which is pretty tough. It definitely is tough. Yeah. <laughs> How'd you uh, attain your position as president for the uh, Atlanta branch of SAG? Uh, I strong-armed hundreds of members <laughs> and I told them to vote for me. Yeah. Um, I. Um, <clears throat> I was a member of the National Board, the representative of Georgia on the National Board of Screen Actors Guild for about three years and um, that involved a lot of traveling and, and more time away from my family than I was really comfortable with. And uh, I decided after that that while well, I still wanted to remain involved, I didn't want to necessarily have that position anymore, so I ran for uh, president and, uh, and won. And uh, I'm, I'm very uh, excited and happy to serve. It's, it's, um, it's a it's a great way to give back um, because I, I'm because of the fact that I do work a lot. Uh, I'm able to have a good amount of influence uh, within the industry and within the guild to make a difference for other members that may not yet be able to work mm -hmm. as much as I can, and and have been able to raise the visibility here of this market and do a lot of things to hopefully <clears throat> uh, create more opportunities for members to work, great. especially in this area. Definitely. Yeah. Explain to our viewers uh, a little bit more in depth, what exactly is the Screen Actors Guild? Uh, the Screen Actors Guild is a uh, union uh, that was founded in uh, 1933 by a number of uh, prominent actors at the time, folks like uh, Eddie Cantor and Boris Karloff and James Cagney came together because in the early days of the studio system, um, I liken it much more to the, the earlier days of baseball before free agency. Mm -hmm. Actors were servants to the studios, and the studios had control over everything from uh, your work hours to meals to wages to everything. And you were pretty much under their thumb, and there was, there was nothing you could do about it. And so the actors organized and, and were able to form their own representation so that they could collectively bargain their own agreements with the studios that would give them more authority over hours and wages and working conditions and pension and health and issues mm -hmm. like that. And so the Screen Actors Guild right now is, is the largest performers union in the world, representing about 120,000 members. Everybody from, you know, your Harrison Fords and Jamie Foxes and Tom Cruise all the way down to guys like me and <laughs> folks uh, living all around the country. It's one of the great things, yeah. I think, about the Guild is that too many people, I think, think of it as just a stars union. Well, the stars make up less than 1% of the membership. Everybody else are, are people all over the country. Uh, actors doing local production, doing industrial films, doing uh, uh, regional television production, all different levels of the industry, but they're still protected by the blanket organization and the collective bargaining mm -hmm. agreements of the Screen Actors Guild, which ensure that um, members get um, protected on the set, that wa wages and working conditions are protected, that they're going to get fed a certain number of times during the day, 
Um, there, it, it, we give, we're able to give access to health and pension benefit uh, to, to most people because independent contractors, that can be really tough. Definitely. Um, and then also that one of the great things about actors is the residuals and mm -hmm. um, the guild helps track and file claims uh, for payment on residuals when your work continues to be sold as all our yeah. work gets sold over and over and over these days. <laughs> what does an actor really have to do to become a member of SAG? That's one of the uh, m interesting things about uh, the Screen Actors Guild is uh, I know when I first started, I started in California which is a little bit different because the Screen Actors Guild is what's called a closed union, mm -hmm. which means you can't just show up at the front door, plunk down your initiation fee and join. Yeah. In order to be a member, you have to get a job, but you can't get a job without being a member. Exactly. So uh, that's why what they, they do is what they call Taft-Hartley people, which allows you to work 30 days without being a member. Um, but that then, it becomes more difficult in the union security state because it's not a right to work state. So truly you only have access to the union work in the union security state uh, once you become a member. In right to work it's a little bit different because it's open to everybody. So it's a little bit tougher then. Um, but basically what you have to do is you have to get hired on a job. Um, and once you become hired on a job you become eligible. Once you uh, get hired again uh, if you're in a union security state, then you must join. Uh, if you're in a right to work state, you don't have to join, although I encourage people yeah. to join. Uh, I think membership is significant. I think that, you know, that we are a self-sustaining organization. So people who pay dues and are members of the union are people who put money into the organization to do things like uh, pay staff to file claims and, and maintain a legal department that will defend actors' rights if they come up with an issue on a producer or a set or a safety issue. That's all taken care of for them. Mm -hmm. And that's all supported by the dues of the members. So obviously, you know, I think when people get to the point where they are working enough under union contracts that they should join and, and be a member of the organization that is there to benefit them. Yeah. <clears throat> well, you briefly uh, talked about the benefits. What does an actor really benefit by being a member of SAG? The primary <clears throat> benefit uh, of, of membership is those protections mm -hmm. that are accessible to you uh, even beyond the contracts. The staff and the infrastructure and the administrative organizations that are there for your access and your benefit to help with things like access to producers and casting directors and and um, um, uh, the the staff and the administrators that are there to enforce contracts on your behalf. Um, and the, the best part about membership is the the agreements. And, and I, I know in a right to work state that they are available to everybody. Uh, but as a member, members come together and negotiate those agreements along with the producers. And um, protections under the Screen Actors Guild are essential. Uh, we take for granted the fact uh, that you know, people would assume that you're only going to work an eight hour day and then you're going to get paid overtime if you work over that and you're going to get fed every six hours, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Those protections are in the contract, but if you're not working under that contract, they're, they're not guaranteed. Yeah. Any producer who's working without a union contract can do whatever they want. Yeah. They don't have to feed you lunch. They can work you for 12 hours, and 14 hours, and, and pay you 100 bucks, and then that's it. Yeah. Um, so the, the, the protections are there. The, the, the collective bargaining agreements are, are the greatest value uh, to, of Screen Actors Guild. Definitely. What is the difference between SAG and AFTRA? Um, <clears throat> Screen Actors Guild uh, and after were founded around the same time, uh, but Screen Actors Guild primarily was founded uh, to protect people working on camera. Um, this, the uh, AFTRA started as AFRA uh, back in about 1937, which was there to primarily represent radio and broadcast performers, mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily on camera for performers. That came later on. Um, there are some differences between the two unions, although they're basically structured the same. They have collecting and bargaining agreements that do the same sort. Of, they have the same sort of protections for members who work under each of them. The main difference between the two would be that AFTRA also includes broadcasters, radio performers, recording artists, uh, whereas Screen Actors Guild is primarily actors that mm -hmm. work on camera and also some voiceover and off-camera dancers and some musicians, but a very, very limited amount. Um, and the general rule used to be <clears throat> that if it was shot on film, it was SAG, and if it was shot on videotape, soap operas, news, things like that, mm -hmm. it was AFTRA. Well, in today's day and age with media evolving the way it is, yeah. it, you know, there is, there's more than just film and videotape, so the, the lines are blurred, which is difficult because we essentially now have two unions representing basically the same pool of talent. Mm -hmm. And that's 
uh, an issue that we still grapple with. <laughs> what are the requirements uh, filmmakers must meet in order to do a SAG film? Um, it, there are several, uh, and, I, and, and I don't mean that because you've got you to always uh, comply with all of them. It depends on what your production is. Mm -hmm. We are fortunate enough that we have a number of different agreements uh, that range uh, the, the entire economic spectrum and also different areas of the industry, whether you're doing a film or you're doing a commercial or an industrial film or a low-budget film. Um, <clears throat> uh, primarily in film, which is probably what you're primarily asking about, is we have a number of different agreements that cover budgets from a few hundred dollars all the way up to several million dollars. Um, and it's basically structured uh, around the budget of the producer and of the production. Mm -hmm. um, basically, what the production has to do is, the bottom line is, just, is to commit to a certain level of working conditions. and. Um, uh, situations to protect the actors and to protect the performers from being overworked and from being taken advantage of. Um, they're very, very simple. I mean, they're very basic. They have to do with, um, you know, working a certain amount of hours. But depending on the agreement, the hours can vary. Uh, there are very, very different um, sections of the agreement. But the bottom line is basically committing to a standard of working that is equitable, that is fair, that makes sure nobody's put in danger and nobody's taken advantage of, mm -hmm. and that everybody's going to get fairly compensated based on the budget of the production. Nobody's going to ever ask you to spend more money than you have. Yeah. Um, these agreements are terrific. I, I had a former student of mine a few years ago that made a feature-length 90-minute film for $7,000 under wow. a union contract. So wow. he was able to use union actors, which you would think would be unheard of. Yeah. But we have that sort of flexibility in the different contracts that we have. Um, so I would recommend to anybody who might be interested in working on those types of contracts, if you have a, a, a film or a script that you want to produce, you can do it for whatever amount of money you have. Uh, contact our local office. We have a fabulous yeah. executive director. Melissa Goodman and the mm -hmm. staff that works with those, specifically with those kind of producers who are just starting out and are just learning to work with the guild and to work with the contracts and basically probably just developing their craft and they will walk you through the whole process. It's, it's much simpler than people imagine um, and I think it can be very beneficial because you now open yourself up to the entire talent pool. Union, non-union, people who have worked in this business 5, 10, 20 years, name people, whoever would be willing to work with you um, if you were able to commit to the contracts. Yeah. Well, once again, you started t touching on it. Um, what are some of the ways uh, SAG assists filmmakers with their production? Um, we are very fortunate <clears throat> that we um, have a local office mm -hmm. here in Georgia. Uh, a few years back, Screen Actors Guild restructured their uh, brick and mortar offices so that they don't have as many anymore. But seeing as the production is uh, growing so rapidly in this part of the country and that Atlanta really is the hub of the southeast, we were able to keep an office open here and we have a local staff that is available to assist producers on just about anything. Anything from understanding contracts to getting copies of contracts uh, to getting copies of books and regulations and that they need to have on the set. They will also help them get in touch with paymasters and other people within the industry that they may need to fill out their production. Um, we have an incredible staff, and not just here in Georgia, but then they have access to the staffs in L.A. and New York, mm -hmm. which are the headquarters of the organization that can get you things on an even grander scale. Yeah. Um, uh, it's a great network of support that is available, again, to anybody who is willing to access it. And uh, I know a lot of people who come in and they have these preconceptions about the fact that working union is going to make their production more difficult. It's going yeah. to give you more rules and structure and more regulation. Um, yes and no. I yeah. mean, it's all based on fairness and making sure everybody's equally protected and represented. But the other side of that is that now you have access to a whole other network of people that can help you do your production. Exactly. And help, help it happen. Um, and we have access to all that. And you know, we're really lucky here, and I, and I hope that anybody out there willing to do it would use our local office and take advantage of the women that we have that do just tremendous, tremendous work for us. Yeah. What are, uh, what are some of the ongoing events or activities that SAG participates in or maybe has coming up? Um, we are always uh, in the mode to try to create more opportunities for our members and mm -hmm. just to educate people in general. Uh, um, right now, we're in the middle of an organizing drive that uh, we are uh, slowly 
accumulating data and information about the market and things that are happening out there right now, union versus non-union, to try to create more opportunities for our members and more union opportunities. Um, we're always involved in the community. Uh, we were very uh, involved last year in the passage of the um, um, tax incentive bill, production tax incentive bill that passed yeah, last year. That was great. Um, yeah, that was that was a big coup uh, because previously the year before uh, it didn't work out, and so we went back and we got it this time because that's ever since Canada several years ago introduced these enormous tax incentives, mm -hmm. the, the, the business has become very incentive driven. Um, yeah. Anybody who wants to work anywhere, even in Hollywood these days, but anywhere, um, is looking for some sort of incentive. Exactly. They want, you know, their question is, what's in it for me? What do I get? Um, and it's, it's sort of the nature of the beast. Now, we also offer them tremendous infrastructure. We have studio space. We have talented people both in front of and behind the camera. We, we were, I don't know if you know this, but Georgia was the first market outside of LA or New York to produce a network television, an episode of a network television show from beginning to end, from conception to delivery to the network in the heat of the night years ago when they moved their production here, was the first one to do this. So we have everything from beginning to end. But since it's all about the bottom line, we've got to be able to put some money on the table. So <clears throat> we were able to do that last year. And our executive director, Melissa Goodman, is currently on the governor's advisory board that served, uh, uh, she served in, with the group that helped create the legislation. Um, and I and, and numerous people here in the market were involved in many different ways in organizing phone calls or letter writing, whatever we had to do to sort of go up the, 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 the process of going from the House to the Senate and writing your representatives yeah. and getting everybody mobilized behind it. And, and we did that, and, and that was great, again, because we had a local office that was there to coordinate our efforts, at mm -hmm. least. And so we're, we are always involved in trying to create more opportunities in, in uh, one way or another, because this is a business that 98% of the membership makes less than $15,000 a year. Mm -hmm. um, and it just goes down from there. Yeah. So you're talking about the majority of people can't make a living at this business. So one of the great things about um, serving being elected is you can try to do something about that in the way of creating more opportunity, trying to find places where there's more work, trying to turn non-union work to union, anything you can do to give people more opportunity because mm -hmm. this is a business where you have to be prepared and opportunities come whenever they come and you have to take advantage of them whenever you can. And whatever we can do to help spur that process along, we do try to do that. Um, we're always involved in relations with local agents. Um, and different uh, other elements of the production community just to try to help out in any way we can. Um, we have uh, started to begin to get more active in the union movement, getting conduct con connected with the local AFL-CIO, um, and uh, a lot of the local folks were instrumental when we've had some labor issues here. Um, so we're trying to uh, continue to raise our profile. Uh, I think a lot of people don't think that there's anybody in Screen Actors Guild outside of Hollywood, um, but there are. There's yeah. quite a fit, quite a few. There's several thousand of them, um, and I think we can be significant, especially since the industry is becoming more regionalized, mm -hmm. and you're seeing more more production on location in many many different parts of the country. And the stronger presence we can have here, uh, I think, will be very very beneficial for the community as a whole, especially for the actors. Definitely, Mike Panuski, appreciate your time. Hey, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Good luck, yes, sir. Thank you. We'd like to thank our guests, Mike Panuski and Bobby Peoples, for being on our show today. We'd also like to thank you, the viewers, for joining us. So be sure to tune in next time for another episode of Rule Hollywood. <laughs>